Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a resolution to one of the strangest mysteries of planet Mars. And no, we're not talking about the face on Mars. This has been resolved many, many years ago. We're talking about this thing right here. This really unusual cloud-like formation that you can also see in this image right here that was originally discovered in 2018 by the mission known as Mars Express and was coming out of this strange ancient volcano known as Arcea Mons that we know for a fact has been dormant for basically millions and millions of years. So what's creating this strange cloud? And why does it actually look like the volcano is literally erupting? What's causing all of this and how does this all work? Well, first of all, it's important to understand that today we know that Mars is geologically inactive and has actually been geologically inactive for a very, very long time. And although it does host quite a lot of volcanoes on its surface, including the largest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons, this monster right here is like three times bigger than Mount Everest, by the way, all of these volcanoes were erupting billions of years ago. None of this should be producing any plumes or any smoke. And so naturally, we know that this plume is not coming out of the volcano itself. Something else is forming it. As a matter of fact, it's not plume at all. It's actually clouds. It's a cloud-like formation that seems to be created by the volcano and the shape around it. And because we know that Mars actually does have clouds once in a while and the cloud formation is something that we've seen before in various observations of Mars, the question then becomes how exactly does this cloud form? And unfortunately for many years now the scientists after seeing this originally couldn't really answer this question for one simple reason. The reason being that there is just not enough probes orbiting Mars to observe when this particular cloud forms and to actually detect what exactly is happening around there. And so unfortunately when this cloud forms there are no probes there to watch it and by the time that some of the probes arrive to this area to be able to see it the cloud is already gone. And so this cloud is not permanent, it appears seasonally and is only visible during certain times of the day. And in the last couple of years the scientists worked out that this cloud seems to only appear during the Martian summers. Interestingly enough when other clouds tend to disappear. For example, in this image from the Opportunity rover, these clouds were captured during the Martian winter. And by the time the summer arrives, these clouds disappear. And surprisingly, that's exactly when this cloud comes out. And so the scientists behind this paper you can find in the description below decided to investigate this a little bit further and actually found archive footage from other missions including the Viking probes that landed on Mars back in the 70s and determined that this cloud has been doing this ever since then. In their paper they even have several images showing us exactly how other missions captured this cloud and that it was actually always there. But it wasn't until 2018 that we officially took interest in this, and by we I mean scientific community, and essentially tried to figure out how all of this works. Now one of the more interesting parts of this mystery is that of all of the other volcanoes in the region here, Arcea Mont seems to be the only volcano producing these unusual cloud formations that are not visible anywhere else. It's also the only location for any clouds close to the Martian equator. Normally a lot of other clouds form a lot closer to the poles of Mars, not really in the equatorial regions. This cloud also seems to have both daily cycles and annual cycles. And so here in this picture you can kind of see how Every single morning it starts with a head that appears right above the volcano, which then slowly becomes longer and longer, elongating to the point where it's about 15 to 1800 kilometers in length and about 150 kilometers in width. So this is actually a really long but also surprisingly predictable cloud. And then only after a few hours it sort of starts to dissipate, disappearing completely within only about 10 hours. And all of this only happens after the spring arrives to Mars when a lot of different clouds of water ice start to emerge in this particular region surrounding the volcano that's about 20 kilometers in height. But because none of the satellites were ever in this region for those specific 10 hours, it was almost impossible for scientists to figure out what's actually happening here or to observe it visually. Until one of the teams realized that they can actually use one of the technical cameras present on the Mars Express missions. This camera is known as VMC or Visual Monitoring Camera and its main purpose back in the days was to actually just observe the successful separation of the Beagle rover as it separated from Mars Express 
on its way to land on Mars. But it's literally a webcam, it has very very low resolution and relatively limited capabilities. Also the rover itself was unfortunately lost during the landing because apparently two of the solar panels never really opened up allowing the Beagle to operate or to even transmit any information. So the mission itself was only partially successful. But nevertheless, VMC was later reactivated because scientists realized they can still kind of use this camera despite its low resolution to observe Mars from the location where no other probe can see it. And this is exactly how the scientists were able to create this beautiful animation and you can kind of see that it's very low resolution but it does show us the formation and the evolution of this cloud. Although for this study the scientists also combined observations from MAVEN and MRO, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, as well as the Indian mission known as MOM or Mars Orbiter mission which today holds the record for the cheapest mission to Mars ever. I remember talking about this back in the days and apparently it cost less than to produce the movie Martian, which is kind of ironic when you think about it. But I guess the question is, so okay, how does this actually form and what's the explanation behind this if it's not the volcanic plumes? Well, this is known as the orographic clouds. There are a lot of these examples on planet Earth. Here's for example one from Rio de Janeiro and here's another one from Iran. All of these are formed in a very similar manner. You first need a lot of moist air in the area, you then need some sort of a large object like a volcano or a very large mountain standing in the middle and then some sort of an airflow that forces the air up the mountain. This type of an action is known as orographic lift and from the air it sort of starts looking like this. And as this moist air goes higher and higher up the mountain, at some point it starts to condense and freezes over creating the clouds. And so in this case both the pressure from underneath as well as the temperature need to be very specific for these clouds to form and to stay in this cloud form for several hours. But once the temperature changes or once all of this moist air disappears that's when the cloud dissipates as well. All of this happening pretty much every single day in springtime and in summertime and then when the seasons change all of this stops happening until the next spring. Although unlike Earth, what's interesting here is how fast all of this happens. Remember, all of this happens in like 10 hour period, which means that this cloud expands at ridiculously high speeds, up to about 600 kilometers per hour. That's basically the speed of a flying airplane. So in some sense, there are still a lot of different questions about this cloud and what exactly happens here. With the other major question being why this particular mountain and why this particular location? What makes this volcano so unique and so specific? And why doesn't this happen around other similar volcanoes in this area? If we look at the model of Mars, for example, you can kind of see that there's actually four major volcanoes here. But it's only this one very close to the equator that seems to have these effects. These other ones, even though they look very similar and possibly also have a lot of moist air in the area, do not have this. So that's where the mystery is still kind of a mystery. Why this volcano is still not really certain. Also, not a single orographic cloud on Earth, even the ones around Everest, are as long, move as fast or have such ridiculous dynamics. They don't really change that fast. So whatever is happening here is actually an extreme of the solar system. So still so many different questions. But also just the fact that this is actually a water cloud is a very important sign. It of course implies that this region right here has a lot of moist air and moist air very likely comes from some sort of a water deposit nearby. We don't really know what's causing it, but it definitely makes for a good location to possibly, maybe, set up a base somewhere nearby. Assuming of course we're going to be making some sort of a colony in the future. But for now, unfortunately, that's kind of all we know. The details are actually very specific in terms of the location, the shape and the formation of this cloud, but there are still a lot of questions that we're just unable to answer simply because more pictures, more data and more investigations are needed by other missions. Maybe we'll have more pictures from the Chinese probe Tianwen-1 that's currently orbiting around Mars and maybe even more pictures from the Arab mission that's also in orbit. But for now we don't have enough information. Once we learn more about what's going on and how this can be used by future colonists, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description that now has this beautiful Martian design. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.